China has completed its longest ever manned space mission as Beijing prepares to launch its own fully fledged space station by 2023. The country's astronauts spent 30 days in orbit in total, and looking to the future, China's off world ambitions could create a bit of a headache for the U.S., as Emily Su reports next. Remember in The Martian when NASA's rocket sent to save Matt Damon's character exploded and China stepped in and saved the day. Having the U.S. and China working together in space sounds great in theory, but it's impossible in reality. Why? Because in 2011, the U.S. Congress passed a bill banning NASA from working with China, fearing a high risk of espionage. Our adversaries, specifically the Russians, but also the Chinese, are attempting to or have achieved an ability to cripple our operations in space. Yes, sir, they are. The American Congress watchdog that scrutinizes China's effect on U.S. trade and security declared that China's space program may bring serious implications for American interests. Global access to the technology and know-how is forging ahead, and the U.S. is no longer the sole dominating force in the 21st century space race. In just a decade, China's launched its first manned mission in space, conducted its first spacewalk built the first demo space station in 2011 and in 2013 got its first rover on the moon and just this month blasted its most powerful rocket to date. China's development has been faster than any other nation. Ten years ago there was no gap because China just weren't on the page when you compared them with NASA. Now, the gap uh, is really, really narrow. What this means is that China now has the capability to send the parts it needs to build its own space station by the 2020s. The ISS is scheduled to be retired in eight years. If the ban from Congress stays, that's going to leave American astronauts homeless in space. It's a very stupid decision. But that is the politics. That is the struggle between the powers. The reason why China didn't take part in the construction of the International Space Station is because the U.S. excluded us. That's why we were so determined to build our own. Despite that, China still has an open attitude to work with any country, including the U.S. After watching The Martian, the head of China's National Space Administration urged the U.S. to be more open-minded to working with them. Now it's up to the Americans to see if they can be swayed by their own inspirational stories. Honoring the memory of World War II heroes who fought for the freedom of people the world over has become the driving force for one man from Latin America. We hear from him next. He now works to return Soviet military awards to the descendants of those to whom they were originally given. Following his father's funeral in 1992, Roman Kazantsev discovered that all family archives, along with his father's military medals, had vanished. Years later, when he'd already given up hope of recovering the family heirlooms, he received news from Latin America. Can you imagine? I'm here in Russia, and all of a sudden I'm contacted by a Mexican man who shows me a document with my father's handwriting on it. I was excited at first, and later shocked when I found out that the serial numbers matched. Eduardo Cruz is interested in everything that has to do with the feats of the Soviet people during the Second World War. A jeweler by trade, he seeks out military awards at pawn shops and online auctions all over the world, and then passes them on to the descendants. Happiness is being able to conserve this legacy for future generations. As they say, there's greater reward in giving than in receiving. I was excited to the point that my hands were trembling. I pondered the fascinating fate of this medal, how it had made a round-the-world trip. Hello, Eduardo. I'm very happy to see you. I'm glad that you've already taken possession of your father's star. My project belongs to all those friends who, despite their origin and language, honor and protect the memory of World War II heroes, who defended the freedom of all people around the world. Thanks to a man who lives thousands of kilometers away from Moscow, Roman now has yet another memory of his uh, heroic father. And he's eternally grateful to Eduardo, whose honorable hobby continues to reunite fallen Russian soldiers with their descendants. Roman Kosarev, RT, Moscow region. Nice guy, nice story.
Thanks for being with us this weekend. Next programme, Going Underground. Coming up, looking at whether Donald Trump can succeed where Barack Obama failed in the Middle East.